culture in Italy is the Holy Shroud. Millions of pilgrims have journeyed from around the earth to view what they believe is the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. Today, scientists are using modern technology to investigate the authenticity of this ancient relic. A young skeptic, however, has come forward with a claim he can prove the shroud is a fraud. Is this the face of Christ or a forgery perpetrated by some unknown genius? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Three and a half million people came to Turin, Italy in late 1978. Each day, they lined up patiently in the hot sun waiting for one brief glimpse of the most controversial relic in all of Christianity, the Holy Shroud of Jesus Christ. While they waited in the streets of Turin, vendors hawked cheap imitations of the face on the shroud. This commercialism was reminiscent of the Middle Ages, when phony fragments of the true cross were peddled all over Europe. The shroud would be displayed for six weeks and then locked away for a half century or longer. It was literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The Holy Shroud, an old piece of linen, 14 feet 3 inches long. Between the stains, burn marks and patches, the image of a man, his hands crossed in death. The image on the shroud is extremely faint. It tends to fade into the weave of the cloth. Blood stains at the head and at the hands are hard to see. Before the cloth was damaged by water and fire, however, the image must have been much easier to make out, as this reconstructed copy shows. Professor of Theology from Chicago's Loyola University, the Reverend Francis Phylus had to wait 30 years for his first glimpse of the relic. He was already a renowned expert on the shroud, having studied the only material available, photos and documents. It was a stunning experience to see the shroud beyond anything I've ever had in my life. I've heard of people having stunning experiences, but I know now what people mean when they say I cannot describe it. The most surprising element of the shroud is that these stains are faint, vaporous, gaseous-like. And the farther away you get, the more clearly you see the shroud. I had the privilege of seeing it inches away, which most people didn't. And I can tell you, when you're on top of the image, you see practically nothing. In 1978, Phylus was in Turin with a select team of American scientists. They performed many tests on the shroud, attempting to determine how the print of a body got onto this old piece of linen. Could it be the actual body of Christ? The early history of the shroud is hidden in the Gospels and in old legends. Several times, the Bible refers to the burial linens of Christ. One passage in particular has mystified scholars. Mary looked into the tomb and saw two men in white cloth where the body of Jesus had lain. A description of the double image on the shroud? Perhaps. The burial cloth could have been draped like this, producing separate images of both the front and back of the body. 
The legend of Veronica may be a clue to the early existence of the shroud. Saint Veronica took pity on Jesus' sufferings and wiped his face with her veil. Miraculously, an image of his face appeared on the cloth. The words Vera Icon mean true image. And when the shroud is folded in a certain way, it looks exactly like the traditional image of Veronica's veil. Yet, there is no historical record of Veronica. Edessa is a small town in Turkey. Legend says that Thaddeus, one of the first disciples, took a miraculous image of Jesus to the king of Edessa. The king was cured of leprosy and converted to Christianity. Then, during a wave of persecution against the new religion, the cloth vanished. Four centuries later, workmen repairing the city gate made a startling discovery. Sealed into the wall, the miraculous image had remained untouched for 400 years. Stories of the miraculous image of Jesus filtered back to Europe and actually prompted the Crusades. Of course, no single historical object can be held responsible for the hysteria which sent thousands of knights and children off to the Middle East. But they had one goal in mind, capture the Holy Land and bring the famous religious relics back to Europe. The Crusaders sacked Constantinople in 1204. However, the shroud with the image of Christ had again vanished. About 600 years ago, the shroud shifted from legend to history. In 1352, it was discovered in Lyre, France, but there is no record as to how it came to be here. The linen was almost destroyed one night during an accidental fire in a nearby church. The image itself was barely touched by the fire. The shroud finally came to rest in the Cathedral of St. John in Turin, Italy, and is now kept under triple lock and key in a steel and asbestos box. Fearful of further damage, church officials allow it to be shown only once or twice a century. The face on the shroud may be a clue to the remarkable consistency of Christian art. The Gospels say not a single word about the appearance of Jesus. We would expect artists to portray him in a million different ways, but this is not the case. Painters learned from their masters, and the masters in turn learned from their teachers. Even the most brilliant detective should become lost in a tangled web of art history extending back for 2,000 years. Was there a single original source for the face of Jesus? Was it the face on the shroud? The shroud would probably have been all but forgotten, except for an amazing discovery in 1898. Secondo Pia, a lawyer and amateur photographer, was given permission to make the first photo of the holy relic. He was overly cautious, knowing he wouldn't have a second chance. In the morning, the shroud would again be locked away for many years. He worked very late that last night of the exposition. Alone in his dark room, Pia waited nervously for an image to appear on his glass plate negative.
first, he thought something had gone wrong. His negative didn't look like a negative. Secondo Pia said, I was the first man since the apostles to see our Lord's actual face. His discovery was to trigger intensive scientific investigation. In the 20th century, we all recognize the look of a photographic negative. Light and shade are reversed. Faces have a strange appearance. A print made from the negative looks normal. The most puzzling fact about the Shroud of Turin has not yet been explained by science. The image on the cloth looks just like a photographic negative. The eyes seem open and staring, like a medieval icon. When we take a picture of this image, however, a wealth of accurate detail suddenly appears. The eyes are seen to be closed in death. The body contours become clear. In other words, the shroud itself is a sort of photographic negative dating from centuries before the invention of photography, before anyone had seen or even imagined what a negative image would look like. The shroud is something like the corpse in an Agatha Christie mystery. You've got it on your hands. Whether you like it or not, you've got to explain it. If you don't like it, then you have to explain what put the marks there. And remember, not just photographically negative marks, but also the transferred blood stains from the various wounds in this man's body. Using life-sized photos of the shroud, anatomists reconstructed the face of the figure. He was, they report, 5 foot 11 and weighed 180 pounds. Christian art has always shown nail wounds in the hands of Christ. The shroud, however, seems to indicate blood spurting from the wrist. Pathologists set out to test both versions of a crucifixion. Experimenting with cadavers, they drove nails into the palm and hung the body from a scale. They were surprised to find that flesh in the palm simply tore away, unable to support the weight of the body. Then they experimented with nails through the wrist. Here, the tendons and ligaments could easily support the weight. The shroud image was accurate. Even the U.S. Air Force contributed. Utilizing sophisticated computers which can enhance faint images, scientists produced a three-dimensional portrait of the shroud face. Color of the cloth image is like a scorch produced by a miraculous burst of heat or radiant energy. As of the moment, we have to take the word of the experts in physics and related sciences who think the best theory from the electronic experimentation would lead to some type of radiation. Joe Nickel, an artist and private investigator, claims he can prove the shroud is a fraud. It's a simple technique using simply hot water and cloth and a low relief or bas relief, which during the 14th century in France were commonplace. Every artist could whip out these bas-reliefs for the, the uh, church architecture. What you do is you mold the cloth while it's hot and while it's wet to the bas-relief. And to do this, you begin to use your fingers to press and force the cloth to the features so that it begins to take on the relief of the features. And as you continue to work this, say, after you get a good start on it, perhaps every half hour or so as it begins to dry, when you finish, you will have the cloth tightly molded to the bar relief. It will fit it rather like a mask. Since the Gospel of John refers to the burial spices myrrh and aloes, and since aloes has a potent staining property, I decided to try that. I first tried just the aloes, 
and it's a little too potent, tends to smudge. So if you tone it down with the myrrh, it works beautifully in about a 50-50 mixture, and it does not penetrate the fibers of the cloth, just as the imagery on the shroud does not penetrate the fibers of the cloth. A homemade dauber, cotton, piece of cloth, piece of tape. Just apply it very sparingly, and just very, very lightly begin to stroke down the down the plaque. With this experiment, Nickel produced an image of similar color and tone to the face on the shroud. His final test was to subject his image to the process of negative positive photography. Results divide into about three categories. Under technique, it allows the artist to view his work as he, as he progresses. It's consistent with the opinions of two official Shroud Commission members that it was an artistic printing technique, probably using a model or molds. And of course, it's consistent with 14th century technology. The pigment is a light brown color, deceptively similar to a scorch. It doesn't penetrate the fiber bundles and doesn't leave brush marks doesn't look like a painting. Under imagery, of course, it's a perfect negative produced in an era that had no foreknowledge of photography. You needn't desire a negative image, it simply automatically produces a negative image. Altogether, there are more than 50 points of similarity between this technique and the imagery on the shroud. I think it's conclusive. This is wrong on at least two dozen counts, of which I can mention only a few here. First of all, there were 3,300,000 people at Turin during the exposition. Again and again, people in the crowd commented, now I can see forgery is so impossible because these marks themselves are so gaseous, so hard to see. Then we would say, why would any medieval forger put nail wounds here in the wrist, contradicting the medieval tradition that the nail had been in the palm? Still another factor. We must not forget that Dr. Max Fry, the Swiss criminologist, took off the shroud 48 different pollens, microscopically identified, and 13 of them come from plants that are botanically identified, that are indigenous, native, that is, only to ancient Palestine and growing in Israel right now. In October 1978, a chance arose to resolve this question of forgery. 30 American scientists were given four days of uninterrupted access to the shroud. No motion pictures were allowed, but these stills were taken while the scientists were utilizing techniques such as X-ray, infrared, ultraviolet, and minute particle sampling. Their results will certainly generate more controversy. Unfortunately, the one test which could eliminate the possibility of forgery has not been allowed. Radiocarbon measurement could show how old the cloth of the shroud is. The only hitch, you have to burn a piece. In Rome, Contessa Marie Antoinette Nicastro, an advisor to church officials, was shocked by the American scientist's request. That they asked us to experiment carbon footing the Contessa believes the shroud is vitally important to both science and faith. But the permanent loss of such a large sample would be too great a sacrifice. The scientist's request was denied. A solution to this impasse between the church and science was recently proposed by a nuclear physicist from Rochester, Dr. Harry Gove. The conventional technique would need a, a piece of cloth about the size of a man's handkerchief, whereas um, our technique could do it with a single thread about eight inches long. Dr. Gove has adapted a nuclear accelerator to date extremely small samples of organic material. He feels he has already proven the accuracy of this technique. We got a sample of uh, Egyptian mummy cloth, linen cloth, which is uh, similar to the shroud material. And its historical date is known, and it was also dated by the conventional technique. And we measured it, and we got a, a, an age of 2,050 years with an error of about plus or minus 80 years. And that agrees with, the, with both of the other measurements. So we feel pretty confident we can do it. 
Is the shroud 600 years old and therefore a forgery, or 1900 years old and possibly authentic? Never before have church officials sacrificed even the smallest piece of a holy relic for scientific testing. However, a new wave of open communication is sweeping through the church, led by Pope John Paul II. The ultimate decision to burn a piece of the shroud may rest with this man. The shroud, safely locked away, is once more out of reach. It is not expected to be seen again for at least another generation. Perhaps in the time of our grandchildren, we will discover if the shroud is the burial cloth of Christ. Can there be scientific tests as for the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ? As for the resurrection, I think we should note that the resurrection of Jesus is a dogma of Christianity that by definition is a miracle and therefore beyond human comprehension. No scientific law could be involved in that case. That is a question of religious faith. As for the crucifixion, however, this is a historical fact subject to our own laws of human life. And therefore, the shroud can be used to give us evidence of a crucified Jew 2,000 years ago. And of course, mathematically, this would lead to the identification with Jesus Christ. The disciple Thomas was the first skeptical scientist. He asked for proof of the resurrection. Jesus obliged and then reminded him, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. <laughs>